Hey everyone, this is another weekly hardware news recap. We have some pretty interesting ones for this week, one of which is a an enclosure named the Inferno, always a promising name for something. And then we've also got a $950 case we'll be talking about, and the headlining item, Intel and Nvidia working together. Before that, this video is brought to you by the new CableMod Pro Series. CableMod's new Pro Cables come with pre-installed closed combs for clean builds, accompanied by a revamped color style and vibrance. The cables are now using thicker wires, and they've also added right-angled internal USB 3 extension and right-angled SATA data cables. Buy the Pro Series cable kits at the link below, or customize your cable set with the configurator also linked below. So very briefly before starting, we have our new lightweight hoodie. Pretty cool. It's a two-tone hoodie. It has the GN logo on the front chest and then the teardown logo on the back. Uh, we're pretty happy about it. You can check it out on the store at store.gamersnexus.net. But let's get to the first main item. So the headline story is interesting primarily because it involves the silicon giants Intel and NVIDIA sort of working together. It's not like they're making a product like the uh, doorbuster news that Intel and AMD were doing. But they were working together, communicating with the U.S. House of Representatives IT subcommittee on AI, deep learning, machine learning, and the future of AI. The U.S. House of Representatives IT subcommittee launched a hearing to increase government understanding of artificial intelligence and, quote, to discuss uses, barriers to adoption, and potential challenges and advantages of government use of artificial intelligence. The end goal was to begin developing awareness of AI, citing that AI is, quote, increasingly cited as the great fear or hope for future generations. This is the U.S. government. NVIDIA and Intel both expressed interest in the U.S. granting public access to taxpayer-funded data sets, arguing that these would be useful for improving machine learning models and expanding deep learning technology. Development transparency and accountability were also urged with relation to AI development, and that's about all we know right now. So there's actually a full hour and a half long discussion. It's all videoed. You can watch the whole thing start to end if it really interests you. There are a lot of other companies involved too, not just Intel and Nvidia, but they are obviously two of the biggest in the space. The next one is CompuLab's new desktop, which looks a little crazy, and that's because it's a passive cooling solution that leverages the entire chassis to radiate heat out of the box. The machine is called the AirTop 2 Inferno, perhaps not the best name for a cooling mechanism. It's outfitted with a C236 motherboard, an i7-7700K, and a GTX 1080. The most interesting aspect is the enclosure itself, which exists only in renders right now, but will come out later. From what we understand, the CPU connects via cooling block to the side of the case, so the left side panel, and then that conducts heat and spreads away the heat load across the entire side panel surface area. A triple walled side panel has three sets of aluminum fins exposed to air, with the right panel supposedly responsible for syncing the GPU or some other components. Our understanding is that each side panel has a set of flat copper heat pipes along the panels, and the AirTop 2 Inferno reportedly can sink 300 watts of heat by using these side panels as heat exchangers. The AirTop 2 Inferno is targeted for a June launch, likely at Computex. We don't have pricing yet, but it looks interesting in the least. In similar news of unique cooling systems, you may have seen this one when Jay did his video with Post Malone. It's a $950 case by Singularity Computers, and this is a new division of Singularity that's focusing on case manufacturing. Singularity Computers is best known for its exorbitant high-end custom PC builds, and they've been steadily expanding their brand into the landscape of PC hardware. Under a new subsidiary, Singularity Cases, Singularity is set to release their inaugural case, the Spectre. Spectre is a mid-tower chassis not named after the exploit, and it's constructed from aluminum and glass, and supports up to EATX motherboards. The focal point of Spectre is the custom CNC machined acrylic block that serves both a distribution manifold and as a motherboard tray. This custom block is replete with channels for routing fluid. It has a fill port and a drain port. Additionally, Spectre comes with an integrated reservoir, so prospective buyers need not worry about space or mounting options for cylindrical reservoirs. Also, the Spectre case includes space to integrate a pump, with a pump top and cover included. Users just need to procure the pump motor. 
All D5 pumps are listed as compatible. The Spectre also has mounting points for a second pump should tandem loops become interesting. And lastly, on the rear of the distribution block, Singularity incorporated unique channels and cable combs for routing and hiding cables. Spectre offers 360 millimeter radiator support in the front and top panels, and it supports radiators up to 60 millimeters thick, so quite large. Uh, currently, there are three two and a half drive inch bays supported officially, but there's a separate accessory for a three and a half inch drive, if you like your hard drives. And in addition to this, accessories can also be obtained to mount GPUs vertically, and you can also mount them to the case or to a wall. Spectre's front I.O. consists of USB 3.1 connectivity and audio as a standard. And again, $950. As for shipping and availability information, the first 100 cases will be shipping within four to six weeks. And afterwards, orders will take eight to 10 weeks to ship as it seems like they're going to be somewhat built to order. If the price seems steep, keep in mind that this is a low volume premium product that's designed obviously for one type of buyer, water cooling enthusiasts. The case also includes several components for a custom loop that would otherwise have to be purchased separately. Although it's cold product, the Titan V this week received one of the only accessories that'll ever be made for it, and that's the EK Waterblocks full coverage block, which makes direct contact to the HBM and VRM alongside the expected GPU coverage. The card can be made to fit a single slot configuration with the water block, reducing size significantly by half, which is particularly interesting for anyone who wants to cram more of these into one case. EK is selling the blocks at $130 with an extra optional backblade at $40 for the nickel version. In some of our Raven Ridge coverage, we talked about blue screens of death that were resultant of GPU-Z and 3 Mark interacting in funny ways. GPU-Z now has an update, version 2.8.0, and that should resolve the BSOD issues on Raven Ridge processors. In addition to this, it's got improvements for stability and driver crash issues across uh, just overall, and it also has more support for additional components, and it's got a new tab, uh, DXVA 2.0 hardware decoder information that's been added to the advanced tab, and as a bit of a bonus, it's got now better VRAM utilization logging and perf cap sen sensing for NVIDIA and AMD hardware. AMD has also released new updates to its software, including the Radeon software and drivers. A new 18.2.3 beta driver pack includes performance uplift for Sea of Thieves, upwards of 30 to 40% on some AMD graphics devices at some resolutions. Brass Tactics also got updates, as did Final Fantasy XII, not to be confused with Final Fantasy XV, which is the new one that's coming out soon on PC. As for resolved issues, AMD has fixed FreeSync issues in Chrome, full screen games, and multi-display setups. They've also resolved some flickering when enhanced sync is enabled, lighting corruption in Fortnite has been resolved, and they've resolved some audio distortion bugs in Relive. Some crashed desktop issues were also solved in For Honor and Shadow of War, which really just helps us all appreciate how hard driver development is, because you basically have to support every single game. Good luck. Uh, so that driver is probably worth grabbing if you have any of those specific issues. Quick update, there's a lot of Intel news. We've had nonstop AMD news for the last year or so, but we have some Intel stuff coming out now. So uh, the quick update first, Intel's DGPU story. So Intel put out a statement after the uh, stories that came out around their chip that was shown off at the IEEE conference. And the DGPU that was being discussed is basically, as we stated, a prototype. I think we said that several times. May never come to market. It's more of a circuit design test, as we sort of said. Uh, however, they more specifically said the words circuit design test, not just a prototype. So this is actually using an integrated graphics component of Intel's existing lineup, which would explain some of the frequencies and voltages that we saw. However, uh, from what Intel says, it doesn't necessarily have anything directly to do with DGPUs, despite the reporting everywhere for the last week, including our own story. Uh, but they have reinforced that they are working on DGPU products. It's just that they don't want anyone to think that this is reflective of those. So uh, whether or not that circuit design research ends up in the DGPU stuff in the future remains to be seen. Certainly Intel doesn't want to talk about any of that now. So even if it were being used there, they wouldn't tell us. 
but hopefully that uh, adds some additional information on the previous story. And then another Intel story, they've got a $5 billion investment going into a 10 nanometer production retrofit on their Israel facility. So they have a facility in Israel for uh, fabrication of silicon components. This is now being adapted to fit for 10 nanometer production. It'll be a $5 billion investment with support from the local government, and it's expected to be done by 2020. There are hopes that spending the cash infusion on retrofitting the facility will help aid with 10 nanometer production because that's been problematic for a while now for Intel. And then also interestingly, we talked about the G49XX series last week, G4920 and G4900. Those were Celeron Intel CPUs. And now we're talking about the G5000 series. This would be the successors to the popular G4560 and long ago, the G3258. So the 5500 and 5600 are the main two processors we're talking about today. We have some pretty much finalized specs at this point. They are part of the Pentium Gold line, which is more or less the new branding for the Intel pseudo high low end products, basically everything up until an i3. The G5400 is included in this, and this new series of Intel Pentium CPUs should theoretically be using Coffee Lake architecture, and will be running two core four thread configurations, ranging from 3.7 gigahertz to 3.9 gigahertz with no turbo availability, as they are locked from overclocking. These will likely be available with the new 300 series B and H motherboards, and I believe there are some rumors out there already as to the launch dates of those as speculated by the internet. So that's all the news for this week. As always, subscribe to make sure you catch next week's recap. And we have some major feature pieces coming up through the next couple days as well. As always, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly and store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our new uh, sort of sporty hats or the hoodies that we're pretty excited about. Check that out on the store and I'll see you all next time. and that leverages the entire chassis to radiate heat out of the box. Thermals.